Millions of years ago, the ocean existed in a different state than what we now know it to be. The depths of the ocean were full of life, a melody of colors and shapes that danced far beneath the surface. However, as time passed, the balance of these delicate marine ecosystems were disrupted. Beautiful ecosystems within the ocean were replaced by defunct landscapes. Picture this, no marine life is to be found, no colorful plants and schools of fish are present. Formerly vibrant communities are replaced by lifeless areas comparable to underwater deserts. The scenario just described encapsulates the formation of dead zones in the ocean, which we will be covering in this media project. Now that we've seen firsthand what a dead zone looks like, let's dive into what exactly a dead zone is. Dead zones are areas in the ocean with extremely low oxygen levels, referred to as hypoxia. These diminished oxygen concentrations are too low to sustain marine life. Fish and other mobile creatures cannot survive as a result. These areas are known as deserts of the sea because any marine life in these zones will either leave or die. Dead zones typically occur in shorelines and coastal areas for reasons we will cover later in the video. As you can see here, we are approaching a dead zone in the following video. If you look straight ahead, there is a spot where there's like no life whatsoever. That is a dead zone. It's mainly just sand and occasionally you'll see like fish or go by. That's because they're swimming to like the nearby reefs and stuff. But yeah, overall there's like little to no life. Understanding why dead zones form is crucial to preventing their emergence in the future. Dead zones are primarily the result of excessive nutrient flow into select regions of water. These nutrients, namely nitrogen and phosphorus, come from fertilizers, waste, and surface runoff of rainwater. This influx of nutrients stimulates the growth of algae in a process called eutrophication. Eutrophication is when a body of water becomes overly enriched with certain nutrients, causing a variety of ecological issues. In the case of dead zones, the result of eutrophication is an abundance of nutrients that causes dense populations of algae to rapidly grow. We call this phenomenon algal bloom. As the algae continues to bloom, the ocean will not have enough nutrients to sustain this growth. There will not be enough space and light to support the photosynthetic requirements of all the algae, causing it to die and sink to the bottom of the ocean floor where bacteria will decompose the organic matter. This decomposition process consumes oxygen from the bottom layer of the ocean, decreasing the dissolved levels of oxygen in the water. These hypoxic conditions create an environment in which most species will fail to survive. This also provides context as to why dead zones form mainly in coastal areas. These areas are susceptible to human influence through the flow of nutrient pollution from human activities. These shallow waters often have limited circulation, which makes it easier for anaerobic environments to occur. There are several ecological impacts from dead zones, varying in severity of consequence. Some of the impacts are as follows. Loss of marine life, loss of marine habitats, loss of biodiversity, increased algae blooms, and decreased production from fisheries. Loss of marine life is caused by less mobile organisms that are unable to tolerate low oxygen levels. The death of these organisms will impact the marine ecosystem food web and will lead to a change in a species composition, reducing the species diversity. This change in species composition leads to the loss of habitat, causing changes in population dynamics and shifts in population. Hopefully we have shed some light on the emergence of dead zones and how problematic they can be. There are, thankfully, several ways to reduce their frequency within oceans. By exercising waste management through reducing runoff, artificial oxygenation of select areas, enforcing a higher quality standard of water, and monitoring dead zones already around, we can promote a healthier environment for aquatic species. Most importantly, spreading awareness can serve as a catalyst for smarter environmental decisions. We hope that our project has helped contribute to this effort.